Yo, yo. What is up, everybody? How's everyone doing tonight? J-Man, how you doing? Siberia, you still here? Golden Glow, Sign Media. How you guys doing tonight? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, it'll be a little bit of a shorter stream tonight, but I think it'll be pretty informative, uh, pretty valuable. Let's just want to get the lights a little lighter. There we go. That's a little better. Uh, no worries. Been a super, super hectic day. Um, I'll circle back soon. I promise. I promise. Um, man, let's see if it. All right. All right. Little blue in there. Okay. Um, so a handful of topics I want to talk about tonight. Uh, we can just kind of jump right in. Um, basically three main things I want to go over. Um, being uh, security, uh, talking about the proposed stud fee changes, and then uh, some updates and things on I Know Your Horses. Hey, Try Guy, how you doing? Um, so last night I uh, had a very special stream. We had a horse giveaway uh, with Eric Wong and uh, talked with 6-in-1 uh, Racing a little bit about how they lost a handful of horses uh, due to what sounds like almost a phishing attack um, on their account. Basically, what that is, a phishing attack means it's someone pretending to be someone that they're not. Uh, they most often send an email, and that email contains a link that looks like a link um, to a trusted website, and in fact is not. Um, and because it is believed that 6 and one was using uh, email, not MetaMask, that um, it allowed for this bad actor or actors to quickly gain access and basically take all of the horses out of the stable. Hey, Lucky, how you doing? Um, so I was really kind of thinking about that more and thought it would be a good idea to do a stream just to go over some web, internet, computer, security 101. This is super high level. It's pretty basic stuff. Um, but, uh, something I think that's really important, um, especially, you know, people are putting a lot of money into Zed. Uh, thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars, if not more. Um, even a few hundred dollars, I mean, is a lot of money. Um, so it's important to try and, in my opinion, to try and protect um, our assets as well as possible. So today's stream, we're just going to go over like a very, very high level um, kind of overview at different layers of security, different levels of security, um, and some just things to consider uh, in general, not just for Zed, uh, but just kind of for uh, being online. Lucky uh, got a window AC unit in. Nice. That's got to feel real good. All right. So um, before talking about internet security, uh, just a quick disclaimer. Uh, nothing that I talk about will guarantee 100% blanket safety. Um, these are all just some practices that can be put in place to try and help um, to keep you safe online. Um, again, nothing is guaranteed. You aren't going to be completely um, safe from having anything compromised online, but these are just some steps you can take to try and improve things. Uh, so the first thing that I want to talk about is keeping your device updated, whether that's a desktop computer, laptop, or phone. Uh, try and keep them updated to the latest operating system version, make sure they have the latest security patch updates. Um, if you get those push notifications I'm on Android, if you get a push notification saying, hey, please update to your phone, do it. A lot of times, especially with Android, those are related to security purposes, um, especially in between the big releases. So first and foremost, kind of start with the layer of the actual physical device itself and trying to keep that up to date. Um, and uh, just critically, critically important. Um, Pack Protocol says, almost got you. I'm so happy they didn't, but that's that's got to be terrifying, absolutely terrifying. Um, so then kind of taking, going from operating system, if we go kind of a level in, operating system slash device, um, looking at your apps and your program. So if you're on your phone, you're using MetaMask on your phone, 
um, or Z on your phone, um, really it's important to make sure that you have auto updates on, uh, make sure that you update frequently, um, that kind of everything you are using is on the latest and greatest version, again, uh, for security purposes. Um, one second. Um, then kind of taking that a step deeper, looking at browsers. Um, there's a lot of, obviously what we do with Zed is online. I've kind of bundled this in with apps and programs. Um, for web browser, I like to use, and what you're seeing on screen here is uh, Brave. Um, may, I'm not saying it's the best. I'm not saying you have to go use this, um, but Brave is based off of Chrome. Um, or Chromium, I believe, and has a lot of built-in privacy protection, ad blocking features. Um, so it's very security conscious out of the gate. Um, and uh, J-Man says, just kind of quick little timeout. Uh, J-Man says, I don't get how they moved on the blockchain. Zed themselves then moved the horses over the blockchain? Um, I'm not sure if I'm totally understanding that, J-Man. Um, Basically, it's like just someone else had access to your account and then moves it, just transfers the horse from one wallet to another wallet. Um, and if that wallet is more or less anonymous, then like, yeah, you can see the address of where it is, but you don't necessarily know the owner of that, if that makes sense. Does that answer your question, J-Man? Um, so then with... Uh, kind of continuing on with browsers, I like Brave. Uh, it's light, it's fast, great ad blocking, uh, built-in privacy. Um, I think it's a really, really nice browser. It supports MetaMask. Um, the next thing I want to tie into is passwords. So a lot of us will store passwords in the browser. I would not recommend that, especially on a kind of movable or mobile device, whether that be laptop, tablet, uh, or phone. Um, again, if your device becomes compromised or... Um, any sort of attack that could access or see um, any of those shared passwords. I believe Firefox does a pretty good job of encrypting. I think they all might do so now, um, but it's still potential for vulnerability um, if that is stored and if that is stored on your device. So alternatively to that, I'd recommend using a password manager, um, such as like a Dashlane, a LastPass, Bitwarden, OnePassword, KeePass. Uh, just go ahead and Google Password manager, you're going to see a ton of videos, content on those. Some of them are free, some of them are paid. Um, I'm not going to necessarily endorse a specific one um, or recommend one. All up to you and kind of your use case. But would highly recommend instead of saving passwords to your browser, saving them to a password manager. Um, and that way you can do it for multiple applications, not just browser-specific things. Um, if you are on a mobile device... Uh, another big thing would be to use a VPN. If you're logging into public Wi-Fi, um, you could be logging into a uh, kind of spook SS, spoofed SSID or one that's made to look like. Um, for example, if you're at McDonald's um, and you see another a Wi-Fi that's called you know, McDonald's Wi-Fi, you log into that thinking it's actually from McDonald's when in reality it's owned by a bad actor and they can see all of your traffic um, that you would be using. And this is a gross oversimplification of things. Um, it's a little more complicated than that, but uh, VPNs would basically tunnel your internet and protect your data from being exposed. Again, gross oversimplification. Um, speaking kind of Zed specific, um, look at uh, the whole like MetaMask versus email. Um, I personally am a proponent of using MetaMask over email. Um, I think that it's a little safer. Um, I, I don't quite get the whole email passwordless uh, thing. Um, and given the experiences I've heard from six and one and a handful of other people, uh, just by kind of seeing through my Twitter feed, um, MetaMask seems like a safer way to go. Um, anecdotally. Um, a few kind of notes on MetaMask and how to use that securely. Um, when using MetaMask, um, when you log in or a site uh, requests access, you need to first authenticate. So you'd have to provide a password to log into MetaMask 
And then to use MetaMask on a site, you would have to sign, say, hey, I want MetaMask to uh, be able to communicate with this website. So that alone creates kind of two levels of protection against um, any bad actor acting immediately or acting quickly, um, at least potentially slows them down a little bit at the very least. Um, with MetaMask, you have a password to log in, but you also have something called a seed phrase, and that's used for account recovery. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar, a seed phrase, at least in MetaMask terms, is a 12-word combination that uh, even MetaMask doesn't know. So you're the only owner of that seed phrase. If you lose your seed phrase, you lose your MetaMask wallet if you can't remember it. Um, I would recommend not keeping it in the cloud, not keeping it on your device. I would keep it offline somewhere um, hidden. That um, so, if your device were to be hacked or information were to be leaked, that your MetaMask seed phrase could not be found. Um, if someone were to find that, they would be able to almost immediately get into your MetaMask account and transfer out anything that is in there. Um, if you have a lot of crypto tied into your MetaMask, a recommendation um, that they have is to use a hardware wallet. Word of caution is that hardware wallets, however, are not compatible with Zed at this time. Um, they, they said they'd kind of bring out an announcement when that's the case. Um, but at the, as of this time, it is uh, no, uh, not an option. Uh, so please, if you have a hardware wallet, do not transfer your horses in there. Um, any questions on security? That's kind of my overview. I know it was quick. Um, but just very high level, um, think about security from the standpoint of layers. So you've got your device, your applications uh, as a whole, and then kind of inside your application. And what are you doing to protect yourself um, at each one of those layers? Um, and again, there's no silver bullet solution, but hopefully some of these things could potentially help you. Um, the next kind of big announcement and thing I wanted to talk about uh, were the changes to the proposed changes uh, to the stud fees. Um, so basically, and I've got this, uh, this tweet up here, um, Zed are proposing, it's not set in stone, it's not official, um, an increase in stud fee, which would basically uh, almost triple the floor of the stud fees compared to where they're at now. Um, excuse me. Um, my take on this um, is that I think they should be raised. I don't think they should be raised to the extent and to the height of where they are at currently. Um, I think it's way too steep. Um, I'm I'm all about trying to make this game accessible for people who don't have a large bankroll, and I think the proposed rate really affects those people. Um, however, I think it's only a matter of time before we see a change uh, and probably an increase in the stud fee. Um, so when that happens, I hope a few other things happen with it. Um, one, I hope that Zed takes time to actually listen to the community and what we're saying on Twitter, uh, on Discord, assuming it's respectful, um, just through like really any social channels, YouTube. Um, I, I think that's, that's going to be wildly important. Um, I think that when this happens, it needs to happen after the breeding bugs are fixed and stabilized. Um, I don't think it makes sense to roll out any sort of price changes before that happens. Um, I think it'd be a really kind of disservice to the community. Um, and I also feel that uh, they should wait until fatigue and class changes are in place because then it the current stud rate wouldn't necessarily make sense either depending on how the racing dynamics change within the game um 
one thing that I don't see many people talking about um, is that Zed have said, basically just straight up said, um, I can make this bigger, um, we intend to review these allocations on a quarterly basis to ensure these allocations remain appropriate as the game evolves. Um, so I wonder if that's the allocation, like the distribution of the um, percentages, or if that's actually reviewing the price changes quarterly. Because right now we're seeing a proposed price change without necessarily a uh, allocation change. Um, and theoretically, you could change and have both affected at the same time. Um, so I think that's something to be um aware of as a you know consumer on zed um and you know i i really want to understand what those reviews mean is it truly the allocation in terms of distribution of the funds or is it in terms of raising the price um so like to me it doesn't make sense that if they were to you know change this whether that be the fee and or allocation and then within three months they implement class changes and fatigue um they would change it all over again because i think you would have to with the dynamics of the game changing i feel that's a little too um abrasive in my opinion i think is a good word um that being said with this depending on how you feel um I'd like to stress the importance of keeping the conversation civil and constructive um, simply because that is the only way that Zed will take us seriously if we want them to take in our feedback um, and they we want them to listen to us as a community. Um, that's how we have the biggest chance of making a change. Um, let's take a quick second here to check up on chat. Um, all right, so let's see what we got here. Uh, the knack blood has to be protected. You can't have people running around making legendary knacks for 80 bucks. I completely agree, Pack Protocol. Completely agree. Bergy, hey, what's up? Lucky says, I think the bump to a 0.1 base would be more reasonable for now. I would agree with that, Lucky Charms. Um, Siberia says, before raising stud fees, they need to work on the class system, like non-winners of three, non-winners of two, etc. Also would have more than five classes. Completely agree, Siberia. Um, Lucky says, I think they need to fix race times before looking at increasing breed prices. Uh, that's very interesting, Lucky, and I agree, because who's going to want to spend an increased... I mean, unless you're really just playing this for the breeding, if you're going to spend all that money for a breed that you can't really race figure out maybe optimize or maximize value for and then um potentially sell flip or breed with again that that timing is completely off and i think that the value um of zed as a platform is is weak uh if you kind of can't do, if all those pieces aren't in place so i think that's a really good point lucky um Berkey says, I want the prices up. That seems a bit much, however. I, I agree, and I feel like that's kind of like the the general um, consensus by most from what I'm seeing is that most people want to see the prices go up a little bit, um, but they think that this is a little too much. Yeah, like potentially 3xing where we're at now is, uh, I think, just really, really steep. Um Um, one sec, one sec.
All right. Uh, Golden Glow says, I'm in 100% disagreement with raising the minimum stud fee on anything but Nakamoto's. Uh, let the market determine the price for breeding. That's way to that's that's way to centralize the decision to make it make in a market is supposed to be decentralized. Hmm. Uh, Golden Glow thinks it's too centralized, um, and that this should be decentralized because it's being I think crypto based. It should be a decentralized experience. Um, the odds of lightning says high prices will limit new entrants and small stables all in for free market and fixing race classes is the key to future value of horses frosty says yo what up frosty how you doing golden glow says i say all but nakamoto's uh they had already announced that it would cost more to breed nakamoto's and it's in the lore Selling point of the game is supposed to be cost of entry is low, and they've been saying the cost of entry is supposed to be low from the very beginning. Raising the cost of entry is tantamount to putting a game out of reach for vast majority of the world. They don't want to form a partnership uh, to lower cost of entry for people. Raising the breeding price is hypocritical. Um, I, I don't disagree with that, Golden Glow. I guess kind of playing devil's advocate would just be that at this stage of the game, Maybe they're not at the maturity point to have it accessible. Maybe that accessibility comes uh, in a few breeding cycles. Um, and who knows, maybe even the breeding would get pushed down. Um, um, Lucky says, I feel it could be hard to convince a new stable to buy an overpriced horse. Just wait eight plus hours to watch it lose. I wouldn't want to breed a new horse at that new price, only be able to run it six times a day if they are a good runner. If it's a Genesis Nakazabo, want to be more expensive, they could easily change their weight in the breeding formula to increase their price. If they want to raise a minimum for breeding by 3x, make sure that discount is a bigger discount from breeding within your own stable. I like that, J-Man. I think that's interesting. I think that's very, very interesting. Um, I I think, you know, just kind of reading these comments and kind of talking it out more, I think that um, adjusting the formula I think is more valuable than rating raising the prices. Just straight raising the raising the prices at this point. Um All right. Um please feel free to keep the kind of breeding conversation going. Um wanted to shift gears and we'll wrap up actually pretty um soon. Um, what do you think a properly priced starter horse looks like eighty to hundred dollars for an elite to be affordable to increase the user base of Zed? Yeah, I would say like maybe like a hundred, a hundred. I'd say like maybe a two hundred could be accessible. I mean, obviously cheaper would be better. Um, Rossi's just here for the ride. Higher price is the only way to define and protect the assets. UFO nut says there will be plenty of entry in the market soon enough. We can't have the horses turn to top shot moments. Protect those assets. I think, in a way, again looking at chat, it almost comes off like a protect these assets right now at a higher value. Wait a few breeding cycles, and then I think the accessibility comes into play more. Um, Thirty-six Genesis horses. The logic letting poor people have the opportunity to enter the platform. They raise minimum breed prices. Uh, I'll leave the game and try and burn. Uh, I'm sorry, not not quite getting what you what you've got at the end there, Golden Glow. Uh, but please feel free to keep burn the whole platform on the way out. <laughs> They're fixing. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um. So wanted to please feel free to keep the breeding chat going. Um, but we're gonna switch gears over to Know Your Horses. Um, they released uh, an update, um, which is basically looking at um, 
the, an extra little tab here talking about speed statistics. Um, so I wanted to kind of talk about this a little bit. Um, I'm not necessarily a huge math guy. Uh, I'm more of a data guy. Um, that makes sense. That difference makes sense. Um, so we're going to go over this just a very, very kind of high, high level. Um, so one, I find this interesting because it's all about speed. And if you know, followed me for a while, you know that myself have kind of been preaching Eric Wong's uh, work on speed. I think speed is incredibly valuable. Um, and even uh, Know Your Horses with this update kind of came out and said, uh, and I quote, while it's certainly too early to make a definit any definitive conclusions, we firmly believe there's a deeper connection between how fast a horse can run and its overall success as a racer. Um, so I thought that was kind of interesting. I thought that kind of like reinforced everything relating to uh, speed. I agree, Eric is a genius. Um, Know Your Horses has had some great updates. Um, one sec. Um, so yeah, just kind of want to do a quick review of this tab. So I pulled up uh, Charlie Cheval, Centribus, shout out. Um, and I thought this would be kind of interesting to look at. Uh, so here you have your distances, your number of races. Now this is horse specific. This isn't Z specific. So here's your, your min is your fastest time. Your mean is your average time. Your max is your slowest time. Uh, the mode is your most frequently occurring time. Um, your range is the kind of difference. This is kind of like your D score between your large and your small. Um, and then here's your standard deviation. Um, and what the standard deviation is, is basically just, it's a measure of how much variation exists within the data set. So a lower standard deviation means that the data of your horse lies close to the average and a high standard deviation means that it's more spread out. So how far away you are from the average, uh, like where 25% of your races are, where the kind of the middle of the pack, uh, the median value is, and then where your 75% values are. So kind of where you get value out of this data is you actually have to go to another chart and the link's kind of buried, um, but there's a little link here that says click here. Um, and that pulls up basically the speed statistics for all of Z. And you can see here, this is last updated um, on yesterday at 1.23 p.m. I don't know what time zone um, they are in. Um, so here you see the number of races. Again, it's the same kind of thing. So there are a few different ways that you can kind of get value out of this. Um, and Know Your Horse has put out a, a great blog on this, uh, which I'll throw in chat. Um, but I'm going to just kind of summarize this at a very kind of high level um, overview. Um, basically, it goes as like, first of all, don't get discouraged uh, if your horse is racing slower than an average time, because that isn't necessarily what's important here. Because think about if you have a U shape, you're going to run a bunch of races fast and you're going to run a bunch of races slow. So that average time isn't necessarily an indicator of a poor performing horse. Um, basically what the article says and kind of something that I agree with is that what you need to look at is the standard deviation in a comparison of the kind of the universe standard deviation or the ecosystem standard deviation um, versus your own horse's standard deviation. Um, and again, that higher standard deviation means that your horse has a chance of going significantly faster and significantly slower than most horses out there. Um, so in the case of Charlie Cheval, um, if we go to something with like a substantial amount of races, we see 2,400, 197 races, that's a pretty good amount, has a standard deviation of 3.77. We go to Know Your Horses, you see a standard deviation of uh, for 2,400 of 2.55. So that's about a 1.22 difference um, between the two, uh, which is 
fairly significant. And if you see down here, um, they kind of describe standard deviation. For simplification purposes, one can assume 68% of race times fall within one standard deviation. Uh, so anything above one uh, would be pretty good from the average. Well, 95% of race times fall within two. So we're, we're about 1.2. That's that's pretty um, that's pretty pretty fast. That's pretty good. Um, however, and so this could, I guess, in my opinion and in the opinion of the article, um, basically said that a high standard deviation, especially across multiple distances, could be tied into what would be a U-shaped horse. Um, and that could kind of be the data behind what drives that or builds that out. Um, but that isn't necessarily everything. And if you don't have a high standard deviation, don't get discouraged um, because there are other things that you could look at. For example, um, I don't know if this is necessarily a great example, but off the top of my head, and it mentions this in the blog, that if you have a low standard deviation um, on your horse, so meaning your horse, that means your horse runs very, very consistently. Um, you know, it's not running super slow, then super fast. No, it's it's pretty um, pretty uniform or relatively uniform in its speed. Um, but its average um, speed is significantly faster than the kind of ecosystem or the universe's average. That would be an example of a horse that would just constantly class up and up and up over and over again because they're consistently running at a top speed. Um, so there's some other factors to consider with this besides just the standard deviation. Um, I think that's a good starting point when we evaluate, but also take into consideration your average times as well. So at 2400, if let's say this was, you know, standard deviation of like 0 0.8, um, or like 0.6, uh, but then you have a mean time right here of 143.6. So your average time is 143. The average time in the ecosystem is 143.87. You're 143.6. So you are faster than average position could be an indicator of a horse that could perform well. Um, if you think about it, that doesn't look like a big difference, but that's like 0.2 seconds, which is can be a very significant difference when you are looking at races. Any questions on that? Um, pretty kind of quick stream tonight. Um, wanted to kind of wrap things up. Uh, give a quick little plug. I don't think he's on yet, uh, but I believe around 10 o'clock, Sean vs. All will be on. So please check him out. We'll be doing some bets tonight. He's giving out an NFT at the end of the week. Uh, shout out to him. Um, shout out, too, to Remy Racing um, for... Um, having a really cool uh, Twitter spaces discussion um, on breeding earlier today. Um, it was really, really nice. Uh, I think you can check those out. Um, if they're saved, go ahead and check that out. Um, he's awesome. It provides a lot of great insight. Um, there's some really good uh, kind of comments and people taking sides on the whole breeding stance. Um, but if no one has anything else to add, um, Big takeaways, security, think of it in layers. Um, breeding update, please be constructive and respectful in your feedback, whether you agree or disagree. Um, I hope Zed listens to us and the things that we say as a community. Um, and then finally, with Know Your Horses, um, I'm seeing people just looking at their own horse data, not comparing it saying, look, I have a, a 285 here. This is great. In reality, um, the standard deviation might be close to that in kind of the universe. So make sure you're doing your comparisons um, if you decide to use this tool and if you find this aspect of things uh, valuable. Otherwise, um, kind of with that, we will go ahead and close out and uh, hope everyone has a great night. Thank you.